Hey y'all. So it has been a while since I've been on here on my channel. So I'm here. I'm back. And today in this video, I am going to talk about my baby, Amir. He has turned one. And so I'm going to give a one year update um, on him and talk about what's been going on with him and where he's at um, with turning one. So let's jump right into that. And let's get started with that. about his measurements so his weight is 20 pounds um, and I was a little concerned about this before his birthday came up um, because when I checked his weight at 11 months he was 18 pounds and some ounces I can't remember the exact amount um, and I was a little concerned about that because when he turned 10 months, he was 18 pounds. So I was like, okay, why is he not gaining that much weight? What's going on? Um, so yeah, so he was, you know, a lot more active. And um, so of course that burns a lot of calories. And then of course, I wasn't eating as much as I should have been eating. Um, because of course he was still nursing and yeah so there were just a lot of factors that went into that and so what that told me um was that I need to you know make adjustments to um accommodate for the increased activeness um because I want to make sure that he's getting those calories and you know just making sure he gets everything that he needs I mean that's normal right <laughs> for a mom to make sure that um your child gets what they need um so his height um i took his height measurement but i don't remember exactly the measurement um but yeah like i said i took his measurement so i now have a video clip so there it is um, so what he eats so right now now that he is a year old he drinks whole milk so he is no longer nursing and he has been on whole milk since I would say about two weeks before he turned one um, because it was actually getting to the point where I could not keep up with his appetite and nursing because he was steady growing teeth and he liked to bite and I it got to the point where I was starting to have anxiety about nursing so I, I was starting to hate when it was time to nurse because I hated for him to like latch on because when he first latch on he latches on with his teeth um and then like you know a lot of times while he was nursing his teeth would just like scrape <laughs> And, oh, that hurt. So I would just sit there and just be nursing and cringing, <laughs> you know. So it, it was getting to the point where I was dreading nursing. And so I was trying to look up, like, okay, can you go ahead and start drinking whole milk? Because, ugh. Um, and, of course, yes, I could pump. But the thing is, pumping wasn't getting as much milk um, that he would actually drink because some sessions I would pump for like 30 minutes 30 40 one time I pumped for an hour because I fell asleep and I, I had five ounces but an hour of pumping 
and I got five ounces of milk. So I was like, you know what, this is just not, uh. And in a way, you know, my schedule is set up. I can't just go and just pump like all day, you know, because I'm constantly doing things. And I, I mean, so much so that I have to set reminders on my phone to remind me to go pump because, you know, there's just so much going on which you all are going to see in future videos exactly what all goes on here. Um, so let's see. So whole milk and he eats solids. Um, he's been eating solids since he was about six months. Um, you know, the baby food. And so let's see. So maybe about a few weeks again before he turned one. Um, I started giving him um, the little, and this, some things were like a few months before, like the little puffs, or like the little stars, little baby stars. Um, so he's been eating those for like since six months. Um, so as he gets more teeth and he starts to know how to do certain things, and I started giving him the little baby cheese puffs. And, you know, once he turned one, he had those four teeth, I gave him um, the little baby biscuits and they like those little long crackers. Um, so he loves all of those. Oh yeah, and the little baby wheels. So yeah, he loves all of that. So that, the baby food. Um, so instead of one um, container of the baby food, I now give him two um, because he'll eat one and then once it's all done, he gets mad. He's starts throwing you know a tantrum and all of that so I give him two so I give him two um containers of the baby food and then probably like five or six ounces of milk because he pretty much gets um full so he won't drink like a whole eight ounce I give him a full eight ounce for like for lunch so I'll give him um like some cheese puffs, the little star puffs, um, one or two of the little baby biscuits, and then um, an eight, eight ounce bottle of milk. And then he's like, ready to go then. <laughs> um, so his schedule, when he gets up in the morning, so he wakes up like around seven-ish, but I don't get them out of the room until like eight. And so I'll go and get him around eight, get him changed, and then nine o'clock is breakfast time. So um, I fix the boys' breakfast, and then I feed Amir um, baby food, two containers, and he gets the fruit um, in the mornings for breakfast. So that and about five or six ounces of milk, and then um, you know the little stars. The little star puffs yeah so i give him that for his breakfast and then around 12 o'clock um i'll give him like a little snack and maybe some um um actually uh the eight ounce bottle so this around this time i give him like you know the puffs and the crackers and all of that and then the eight ounce bottle and then he go down goes down for a nap at one o'clock and then um three o'clock the boys they get up and they have their lunch and so Amir then has you know some crackers or something little puffs and then I give him um, like some juice like half and half like half water half juice half apple juice um so he'll have that and then six o'clock is dinner time and um so then I fix him two containers of the baby food um, which will be like a like turkey and vegetables or chicken and vegetables or the mac and cheese, something like that. So I'll give him that and um, some cheese puffs or something and then uh, the six ounce bottle of milk. And then he goes, you know, get him changed and he goes down for bed. So that's pretty much his um, eating schedule. So that has helped with him gaining from 18 pounds at 11 months to 20 pounds at 12 months, one year. So he was able to pick up um, that weight and he's loving it, he he loves it. <laughs> like I can tell when he's, of course when he's full because he'll start pushing it away like okay I don't want anymore, I'm done, stop. <laughs> 
but it, he, he gets happier too. So that's, you know, one of the signs that I know that he's satisfied and he's good. He, he gets really happy. Um, he's ready to play. So I can take the bottle from him or take the rest of, you know, if he have, you know, some food left over, I can take that. And he's fine. He's ready to go and play. So I know, okay, he's good. There we go. So I don't try to, like, force food on him. Like, try to force all this extra food on him and feeling like, okay, you have to drink eight ounces. Like, no. Because for one, I ain't trying to waste stuff. I'm trying to waste no food. So I pay close attention to exactly how much he eats and drinks um, at each time of the day. So I can make sure I have that amount prepared. Boom. And we're good. Okay. So yeah. Um, so with that being said, sleeping. He, of course he sleeps through the night. He's been sleeping through the night since, um, I don't know, six months. Somewhere between six and eight months, he's been sleeping through the through the night because he went a little longer than the other two boys. Um, the other two boys, they pretty much were sleeping through the night since uh, I don't know, three months, three four months. Because four months, both of them moved to their crib, moved to the crib. Amir didn't move to the crib quite at four months. I think he moved maybe five or six months and we went on and moved him to the crib and the reason for that was because you know we was nervous to have him in the crib in the room with Amari because Amari that's our little wild child and we didn't want him to do you know anything to him like jump into the crib and you know do something to harm him or something like that throw toys and hit him things like that and um so yeah so even when he did move into the crib um, he would still wake up like one time through the night and I would get him, nurse him, put him at the bed and then, you know, he'll sleep till morning. And he would always wake up like around, like some, sometimes maybe 12-ish, somewhere between 12 and 3 o'clock, he would wake up one time through the night. And so then it was like, it was starting to be like, that was going to be the routine. And so we needed to change that. Like, okay, you need to be sleeping through the night. So it was one night, you know, we decided, okay, he, he's going to have to cry it out tonight. So he's got to go ahead and start learning to go ahead and just sleep through the night. It's nighttime. It's time to just sleep, okay? So we didn't want him to start, you know, developing um, <laughs> any idea that, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to wake up in the middle of the night, ready to eat. No, go to sleep. Um... So we did um, a night of letting him cry out. So my thing was um, once he started crying, I would let him cry like 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, he would still be like just screaming his head off and it's not like settling down at all. Then I would go and get him. And so we probably did this maybe like, I would say I went and got him maybe one or two nights after he cried for like 15 minutes and then after that he would wake up and cry and then after a while then he just go on back to sleep until eventually like by the end of that week because it was it was no longer than a week that we you know did this transition and so by that point um he, he wouldn't cry, wake up crying anymore he would just sleep through the whole night so since then he's been sleeping through the night um so he goes to bed at 7 o'clock in the evening. So they have dinner at 6, and then I get them ready for bed. 7 o'clock, they're all in the bed. Um, 7 o'clock is mommy time, man. <laughs> Y'all, I look forward to that. So he goes to sleep 7 o'clock, and then um, he wakes up like around 6-ish, six, six, if I can get it out. 6-ish, 7-ish. Um, definitely by 7 in the morning, he's up. Um, he and his brothers, they are up. They are awake. They have no choice but to know that they are awake. Um, so let's see. He's still in cloth diapers. So we still do the cloth diapers. Um, we have disposable diapers as, like, backups. Like, for whatever reason, I may be behind on laundry, y'all. It happens. Um, <laughs> so I may seem like, hey, oh, Amy, she got it all together. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm trying, okay? 
So if it looks like I'm, I have it all together, it's because I'm, I'm trying to have it all together. It don't always, um, it don't, it don't always go that way successfully though. And you know what? You just keep going. <laughs> So sometimes I may be behind with laundry um, or if we're going um, somewhere um, or if he's um, staying with someone, like someone wants to keep him for the weekend or something like that, you know, his grandparents or um, his aunt and uncle, you know, so then we have the disposable diapers in for that because um, not everybody is comfortable with doing the cloth diapers. Um, cause it, it seems like a lot of work, it seems complicated, but it really isn't. Like, I, eh, it really isn't, but I mean, like, I'm used to it. So once you get into the routine of the cloth diaper, then yeah. Um, I'm going to do another video on the whole cloth diaper, um, taking, you know, caring for the cloth diapers, that whole routine, all of that. Um, let's see, and we will introduce, um, potty training at 18 months. I want to go ahead and get a jump on this because, y'all, I'm still potty training Amari. Like, he, I have officially declared him potty trained, but we're just trying to keep it, like, consistent, you know? <laughs> uh. Um, so, in my next video about, like, what's what all has really been going on around here i'm gonna talk more about that so amir has four teeth he has two at the bottom and two at the top he's so cute with his teeth um and he loves to bite with those teeth now he doesn't try to like go and just bite anybody but if you put your fingers in his mouth he's gonna bite you um and when he drinks his bottle he likes to bite the nipple like you can tell when he's done um, he's full, he's had enough, he's satisfied, because then he just start biting on the nipple, just like that, and just biting on him. I'm like, please, don't destroy the nipples, okay? Gotta buy enough stuff around here. Um, so yeah, so he has, um, four teeth, um, and he's taking steps. Now, AJ and Amari, they were, like, full-blown walking when they were 10 months. They were taking their first steps at nine months didn't really understand or know what they were doing didn't realize that they were taking steps and by 10 months they had it um amir he started taking taking steps at 10 months and then 11 months um then he he started getting better at it um so he can walk um because like he can take like 15 steps just on his own the thing is still getting him to realize that he can walk because he still wants to go and grab something. And, you know, he'll walk, like, he'll go from this point to that point because he sees something that he wants. So he'll walk there, but then he'll try to hurry up and, like, hold on to something. So getting him to realize that, you know what, baby, you can walk. You don't have to hold on to anything, okay? You got it. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see, as far as speech, um, he can say mama, dada, um, and he can say baba, baba, so he go baba, baba, like that, um, and of course, wave too, so I realized, um, on his birthday that I haven't read a book to him. So, AJ, I mean, I was reading books to AJ since, you know, he was still in the womb. Amari, I was reading books to him, too, when he was in the womb. Amir, I I don't remember if I read books with him. I think I was just so doggone sick and just so stuck on that, oh, I'm going to have a girl and just, you know, on Pinterest all day looking for girl stuff until I found out it was a boy. And then, um, then I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember what happened after that. But I haven't, like, sat down and, like, read any books to Amir. So I, I need to do that. Um, so I've been making it a habit. Um, so since his birthday, I told the boys, okay, um, before bedtime, we're going to read books. 
And so I, you know, set up a designated reading area where we all go and sit. And they go and pick out a book, um, which you all can see, like right there, they got plenty of books to choose from. Um, and then AJ has like a whole basket full of books upstairs in his room. So, um, so we'll read books and I'm trying to get, you know, better with that, um, to help Amir, you know, hear the language, hear words, hear speech, so he can start developing that better. Um, I'm not stressing it. I'm not trying to like force anything. I'm not really trying to push him because Amari, he didn't talk a lot um early on either i mean now aj of course he, it was like he came out the room just talking he's like almost five and he's still talking so <laughs> so um so yeah i'm not concerned about that i wasn't concerned about that with amari either because my thing was i paid close attention to do they understand they may not say it verbally but do they understand it if they understand it then they'll say it when they're ready to say it um, so let's see, clothes sizes, Amir wears 12 to 18 months, um, and shoe size, I really don't know what size shoes he wears, but I'm gonna guess he wears like a size 3. I just bought him some shoes for his birthday, but I got a size 3 to 6 months because they still look like they can fit him. And they, they do, because I mean, they're like, you know, the little baby shoes, they stretch, so I, you know, slip them on his feet. Something so that, you know he's cute <laughs> um let's see he loves bath time so he took a big boy bath with his brothers on his birthday and usually when he takes a bath he's like not feeling it he's like i don't i don't want to do this when i gave him a bath one day he just sat there like i don't know what's going on i don't i don't, I don't know how i feel about this was this white stuff floating in here with me it was but um so my husband gave him a bath with his brothers on his birthday and he was not feeling it at at first and then eventually he had fit trying to you know trying to get him out of there he didn't want to get out so he loved it he had a ball with that um he loves playing with his toys um and he loves playing with bottle tops so when like you know after i feed him his bottle and he'll find the top to the bottle he'll take it and like hit it with his hands and keep crawling on the floor and hit it like he's playing like soccer with his hands so he just go all the way around the living room just hitting the cap and chasing it hit it again chase it hit it again he has a ball with that so yeah, so he loves playing with his toys. He loves like pushing like cars like they're, you know, driving. And um, cause I didn't even realize he knew how to do that. My parents told me cause they saw him do that when he stayed over to their house one weekend and they saw him do that. And they told me and I was like, oh my gosh, that is so sweet. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to get him some cars for his birthday. And that's what I did. Got him some little cars for his birthday, little baby cars. And the thing with that is, you know, reminding his brothers that those are his cars, not theirs. Um, they're on punishment anyway. And I'll talk to you all in the, in the next video about why they are on punishment. So that is um, like a summary of what's going on with Amir at a year old. So very quickly, let's see, as far as development, I feel like I am so behind with helping his developmental stuff. Um, so I am really going to be including him in our homeschool sessions because I really got to work on some stuff with him and I feel like I've been slacking. So this is one of those moments where I feel like I feel like an awful mom. And I mean, I know I can only do but so much. I'm only one person. So I can't just say, oh, you're a terrible mama. But that's just how I feel because it's like I feel bad that I have slacked so much and I've, you know, been pulled in all of these different directions, you know, with, you know, the how, you know, things around the house, home, work, you know, um, marriage, because, you know, that's work too. And then 
this kid and that kid because I can't just say kids because they all individually have different needs and so yeah so I'm just like pulled in all of these different directions and everything and so sometimes things go lacking and I just feel bad about it I mean I know it happens it happens but it doesn't change the fact that I still feel bad about it so with Amir so I went to, y'all know, I use the Tiny Beans app. And the Tiny Beans app, you know, kind of like gives like a guide of um, milestones and different developmental um, uh, things <laughs> um, that kids um, develop and learn how to do in each um, age range. So let's see, with cognition... Um, for so Amir is at 12 to 18 months with this so with everything that I've checked off he's at the 12 to 18 months so he's right in the ballpark for cognition so his next step will be to complete simple puzzles so I have already ordered um, in my grocery order at Walmart um, a little bucket that has the little shapes and you drop the shapes in the lid because the lid has a different shape so, um, so simple puzzles, like putting shapes in the holes. So I'm going to have that. And that's going to be like his little homeschool assignment. So while the kids are working on their homeschool assignments, that's going to be Amir's working with the puzzle pieces because he's already showing interest in Amari's puzzle. Amari has an um, alphabet puzzle. So it's just the, um, I have it right here. So Amari has um, the alphabet puzzle here because I'm working with Amari with um, learning his um, ABCs. Um, and I'll talk more about that in his video. So Amir loves coming like with everything that y'all see in here. This is my office slash classroom. So with everything that y'all see in here, Amir loves coming to this puzzle. Um, so what I... We'll have him working on is his own puzzle which will be the little bucket with the um shapes so he can start working on that so that by 18 months so over the next six months he should be able to like put those shapes in the correct hole um so for fine motor skills um he's at the six to nine month range um well, really well yeah six to nine months the one thing he needs to accomplish in that area is pointing with his index finger um i need to basically i need to just verify that he do know how to do that um because i can't quite remember if he actually if he has actually done that um before um yeah, so I'm not sure if he's actually done that before. I can't remember if he just like held up one or if he actually pointed or if he even did it at all. I can't remember. So I got to verify that and then I'll check that off. And if not, then I'll keep working with him with doing that, modeling that for him and, you know, getting him to see that he can do that with his fingers. Um, so still in the fine motor um, skills, nine to 12 months, what he needs to accomplish in that is grasping a pencil and start scribbling. And I actually feel bad about that one because I've been keeping him away from pencils because of course the boys, they're in here doing work. And um, so they have, you know, pencils and crayons and things like that. And he wants to come and grab pencils. And I'm like, no, 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 you're gonna put your eye out. Why are you doing that? And so seeing this, I'm like, oh, so he actually should go ahead and be introduced to a pencil and how that whole thing works, which makes sense because I'm in the process now of teaching Amari how to write and how to hold the pencil. And I'm feeling like I should have been doing that like for a while by now. And so after feeling that way and then seeing this, I'm like, ooh, yeah. Yeah, I should have been on the ball with that. All right, and so then for the 12 to 18 month um, mark for fine motor, kicking a ball, 
Yeah, we got a ways to go to get to that point. Um, so we're going to be working on that, you know, getting him to stand up more and realizing that he can walk. And then, you know, rolling the ball, because I bought him some balls, too, for his birthday. A little basketball, a little soccer ball, and a little football. Love my football, y'all. Um, and, you know, getting him, showing him how to kick so he can learn how to do that. So I got the blocks for him. So learning to stack two to three blocks um, and scribbling on with a pencil on paper. So get him to start doing more of, you know, scribbling on the paper, start, you know, developing that writing skill. Um, so gross motor skills that's active with the whole body. So he's pretty much on point with that. So 12 to 18 months, what he needs to accomplish here is stand and walk well alone. So he can do it a little bit. But he, the key word there is well, stand and walk well alone. So he needs to keep working on that. Walk backwards a few steps. Whoa. Yeah, he's not at that point yet. But we need to um, go ahead and master the walking well alone. And then, of course, he'll get to the walking backwards. Because he's got two older brothers and all they do is just be active. So he have really no choice but to learn all this stuff. So I just feel like my part as his mom, as, you know, the parent is to just kind of guide um, these developmental things. So not feeling, so just, just so that I, I'm clear with you all, it's not that if he doesn't, if he's not meeting these certain things at a certain age, um, I'm feeling like it's just all my fault. No, I'm just feeling like, um, cause he, he's gonna learn these things, okay? I just feel like as a parent, I should be there, especially since I know what is expected, you know, what is what skills are coming up, that it's my job to just help guide that, to help guide, help um help him practice, help him get to that point. So I'm not just like, you better learn how to walk backwards by tomorrow. Like I'm not, I'm not doing that, okay? Yes. And I'm not like beat myself up up either like oh my god he's gonna be 18 months tomorrow and he don't know how to walk backwards no I'm not doing that okay he's gonna get it I just feel like you know it's my job to just help guide him to that okay um give him opportunities to learn how to do it show him model like I may just go in the room be silly and start walking backwards or something you know just let him see it so he can just see it know it have interest in it and one day you'll try it um let's see so that's it for gross motor motor so then social let's see yeah we got a lot of work to do with social so for nine to twelve months that's where he's at um play ball with stranger first of all why would he need to play ball with a stranger couldn't it just say play just play ball with another person I gotta be a stranger. And then you gotta go right back around and then teach the child how not to talk to strangers. Um, point at wanted object. So once again, going back to learning to point. So if you want something, he no needs to know how to point it out. Um, play games like pad a cake. Um, yeah, I'm just quiet on that one. I don't know. Um, I don't know what to say about that one. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, make first move to show affection. That one I need to verify because I, I haven't really paid attention to what exactly is his way of showing affection. Sometimes he, and, and he may have already done that. Because sometimes he may like come up to me and like just grab me and like lay his head on me. Of course that's affection. Because when he does that, I'm like, oh my baby loves me. So yes, yeah, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and just check that one off. Um, I just gotta figure out exactly around what age um was he doing that? Like just snuggling and just showing affection um without me doing it first um so yeah 
So that is it for that. So that is what's going on with my baby Amir. And I am just so excited and just so thrilled that my baby is a year old. So we got a party coming up and um, we got Amari's birthday coming up too. So Amir is a year old and it seemed like I was just sitting here talking to you all about his delivery, his birth. And here I am a year later talking to you all about, you know, his growth and development since then. So this is just, this is just always so cool. He may be my third child, but it's still just so exciting and just cool how all of the stuff works. Um, so yeah, so that is it. And I will see you all in the next video. And just remember with all that's going on, everything that we're dealing with as moms, just don't forget to enjoy the journey, okay? Enjoy. It is a journey, and then a lot of times it's a hard journey. Oh, it's hard. But I want to remind you all and myself to enjoy the journey, okay? All right, so I will see you all in the next video. Bye. here i'm nervous to be on camera that's weird okay mm -mm. <laughs> hey y'all so it has been a while since i've been on here on my channel so i'm here i'm back 